So we have just gotten to the sticks lionesses and their two babies. The babies are somewhere in the middle of the three lionesses. One of the babies just had its head up and um, yeah, flopped back down again. So hopefully one of these lionesses will move and we will get a better view of this. The babies. It's the first time for me to see these cubs. Last time I saw the the sticks, it was only two lionesses. So I su suspected that the one that had the cubs was went off and gave them some food. So yeah, awesome to be able to spend some time with them again. Jen, good afternoon. A very good question from you. Do leopards not get mange as lions do? I've never seen a leopard with mange, but I wouldn't be surprised if they got it. I've seen different animals with mange, but yeah, not, not leopard yet. But I've seen impala with mange, I've seen kudu with mange. So I don't think they'd be able to jump it free and not get it at all. If conditions are right for the mange to happen, it might happen. Brian, have you seen leopard with mange? Nope, I haven't. Not yet. Uh, oh, there's lions on. It is nice to see the, the sticks pride in. I think the last time I was with them, the previous... It was almost a month of not seeing them. So luckily we broke that month of not seeing them and only a week or so and we saw them again. That's brilliant. It's great that everyone's enjoying the sight of this beautiful six pride. Let's hope these cubs make it to adulthood and the pride can keep growing. Get bigger and bigger again. Maybe one day get as big as the Nkohumas. Kathy, if these two prides would meet up, the Kahumas and the Sticks, I think there'll definitely be a bit of fighting. So, with lion life and territories, females fight for territories and males fight for territories. So, yeah, if they have to bump into each other, there'd definitely be a bit of an uncomfortable situation and probably a few scratches along with that. But, um, yeah, let's hope they don't bump into each other anytime soon. Let's give these... Um, babies a good chance to grow up properly. I don't think that the females will kill each other's cubs, but um, I don't think it's impossible. So now we just wait for a bit of movement with these, um, with these lions. Hopefully, no, I don't think any time soon, but we've, we've got time. Let's, um, let's give them the benefit of the doubt and hope to see those babies. Hopefully the babies won't be too lazy and decide to start moving around a lot sooner than the females. And you can just see the little paws as it rolled around. Come on, little cub, show yourself. So peaceful out here in the bush this afternoon. Very quiet, just some birds calling. There's a dove calling somewhere around us. For the rest, absolute silence. It's so beautiful. Oh 
list chasing some flies. <laughs> oh, Ariel, you are spot on with that comment of yours saying it's just a pile of ears and paws at the moment. Well, hopefully this pile will give us some sort of action this afternoon. Not just chasing away flies and then flopping back down. <laughs> That's a first one, a pile of ears and paws. I like it. I might use that again. Thank you for that. <laughs> They don't look incredibly full. Deborah, are you saying that um, these six lionesses are looking a lot better than the last time you saw them? I didn't really see them when they had mange, so I can't. I don't have anything to compare. But yeah, they do look healthy. They they look like they're in good nick and full of good health so very happy about that and what I can see of the cubs doesn't look like they've got any mange on them as well but we'll have to wait and see if there's a, if they move around just but at the moment just some nice furry bodies we can see so it's all good They don't look incredibly full if you look at their stomachs. The two that we can see a bit of their stomachs there. So maybe, maybe tonight they'll try and find some food. One thing we have to keep in con on consideration though, as it gets dark later on today, we're going to have to leave them before dark. These cubs are still very young, so we're not, we don't want to make any or cause any problems for them and be with them with the lights on and all that so we'll try and stick with them for as long as we can but when it starts getting dark we're going to leave them be let them do their thing thing with these spotlights you draw attention to these little creatures and you don't want any other predators especially a big male leopard or a hyena clan finding these youngsters and um, yeah don't want any unnatural assistance in causing any loss of life. <laughs> well, let's hope these lions decide to move. But in the meantime, we're just going to wait for that. Let's head over to the tent and see what Jamie's still have got some sleepy lions here um, yeah no activity really but the one cub has put its face out so we can see it at least it's right next to mum there almost look like, looks like mum's ear and yeah unfortunately there is still a bit of mange on the head there but yeah everyone's still fast asleep <clears throat> Let's keep our hopes up though, let's hope we get some movement at some stage during the afternoon before sunset and keep, keep an eye out for that. Jimelin in Oklahoma, you are asking if a lion comes in from the Kruger Park, 
would it attack us in the vehicle? And if it's, if the reason might be because it hasn't been fed from a vehicle. No, not at all. Um, we don't feed the lions out here. They look after themselves, they fend for themselves, they find their own food. So there's no feeding from our side, definitely not. Um, it might be a bit more nervous with the vehicle around and rather than attacking it might try and keep its distance from us not knowing a vehicle so well i've walked into lions in the kruger park before and they are a lot more skittish than um the lions in in the sabi sands they run off at the first sight of us so no no definitely not gonna attack us because we haven't fed them no Here's a cub lifting its head. Hello, little one. Give us some action. Ah. <laughs> Just some flies that were bothering it, and it's back down. <laughs> you must remember the only places where an Yeah, just the only places where animals get fed are in zoos and in, in breeding projects and rehabilitation projects and stuff like that. Out here in the wild, we don't get, get involved with the feeding part of animals. There's enough food sources for them to, to get themselves. I really apologize for all the sneezing going on this afternoon. <clears throat> Come on, lift your head, start yawning, start cleaning yourselves. I wonder if this lioness has spotted something. She lifted her head quite quickly, so maybe she heard some movement in the distance. It's, this is a nice area. And those nyalas are definitely not far from us. So they might move into this area unaware of the lion's presence and come say hello. The lions will I think will be very happy if something does decide to walk in here. wonder if we're going to get some rain again. Some nice big clouds coming in from the east. The west is quite clear though. So who knows. Wait and see I always say. I think these lions would appreciate rain as well. Every drop of rain and water that they get over their bodies will take a bit of this mange away slowly but surely so rain will be really appreciated much more than just us humans are trying to relieve or get rid of the heat that comes with the drier periods. Let's go see what Taylor is up to. Let's see what she's busy with. She's found some interesting stuff. Well, we've still got a pile of ears and paws. 
there is no movement from these guys whatsoever yet. But we'll, we'll an anxiously be waiting when they decide to move. Just a little paw of one of these cubs sticking out a bit further down to the left. Yeah, there we go. Cuddling with mum or aunt. One of the two. I can hear a little bit of noise coming from these cubs. Just low, like a, almost a grunting type of... Oh, oh. Don't know what they're saying. Maybe they're starting to get hungry. So if they do feel hungry, they might um, try and get some milk and we'll get them to stand up at least. It's either one of them, the adults may be snoring, or it's from the cubs that the noise is coming. But the way that awkward head position of the second one might be why I'm hearing those sounds. See how awkward she's lying there. Maybe it's her that's snoring away. But for the moment, that remains a mystery. I've spent many hours with, with sleeping lions, and they always still find something to do or something to that happens makes it entertaining and keeps you intrigued keeps you wanting to stay here so every little movement gives you that shimmer of hope that there might be some form of movement if it's just rolling around finding a more comfortable way to lie down that's perfect Another possibility for that noise is maybe one of those cubs dreaming. Maybe it's dreaming about a fight it'll have one day when it's big or something like that. <laughs> Franklin's starting their good night calls. Some others calling back far in the distance. Still a lot of snoring. And now it's getting serious. Yeah, that was a proper one. <laughs> Yeah, Ryan, you're welcome. It's just me on lock. So letting the guys know there's someone else wanting to come have a look as well. <laughs> Die, that is a good possibility that they're dreaming about a buffalo dinner, you say. <laughs> Well, hopefully they'll get their buffalo. Well, and hopefully in a place where we can see them enjoying their dinner tomorrow. Tomorrow morning it'll be breakfast already, but enjoying their, their well-earned meal. All, all we can do is hope. Oh, 
Martha, you want to know which animal has the softest fur? A lion, a leopard, or a cheetah? Mm. I've been fortunate enough to touch a cheetah. Uh, we had to dart some cheetah at a place that I worked at. And they had um, radio collars on them and um, they got taken off. The radio collars were old and not working anymore, so we took them off. And that, that cheetah's fur was quite, quite soft. But I would think that all, all the cats would have a similar feeling to their fur. I don't think there will be much of a difference in the, in the texture of the fur. But who knows? Maybe that cheetah is the softest one. I think uh, a lion, male lions, male would be quite, um, would be quite grassy almost, and strawy feeling. And they always look so dirty. So, yeah, maybe. <laughs> but yeah, I can't tell you exactly which one will be the softest. There's a little Natal spur fowl joining these lions, just behind. It's like, what are these funny rocks doing here? And the rocks are moving a tiny bit as they're breathing up and down. Let's see if it's going to alarm call or just move on. It looks quite nervous. You can see it looking around. Where am I going? Where must I go? Folks, I'm going to wait and see what this um, Franklin is going to end up doing. But in the meantime, let's go see what Taylor is up to. It sounds like she's on a Ferrari safari. Hope Taylor gets to stay with um, little Miss Shongile there. But at last, we have got a face of a cub. <laughs> Our pile has decided to move around a bit. Oh, look at that yawn. Oh, I've got very big teeth. <laughs> this cub is very inquisitive, looking at the people. <laughs> I wonder if it's um, grooming itself or grooming mum on the back there. I wish I'd be able to see. Yeah. <laughs> Our patience has eventually paid off in getting a better view at these cubs and it's the first time I've seen them properly as well. Well, it's not proper proper yet, but hopefully before we say goodbye to them tonight we'll be able to see the full body of one of these cubs. Excuse me. <laughs> Quite surprised that in the time that we've been here, they haven't tried to drink from it. The females, nothing. So, I don't think it's far from wanting a snack. Wanting that milk bar to open. a difficult area, it's quite a thick area that they're in. Luckily where they're lying it's nice and open so we're able to see see them properly. But maneuvering the vehicles in here is quite tough. Vince, there is definitely more than one cub there. There's a second cub, I think it's just to the right of this other cub. Um, that we can see at the moment. It's closer to the head of that female that this um, little one's behind. Uh, you can just see a tiny bit of movement next to her ear there. 
Let's just wait and see if it's going to move again. Just behind that ear that we are looking at is where that other cub is. There we go. There's a tiny bit of movement. That is the other cub. So yeah, the stick sprout have just got to two cubs at the moment. Well, it sounds like Taylor's got Shongile again. Let's go see see what she's getting up to. Bar, uh, having a drink from Mum. There's a tiny bit of movement, and then just straight into the belly of Mum, getting a good meal. How nice is that? The rest of the females are still unbothered by anything passed out. <laughs> it's always <laughs> funny, these cubs. I don't know why, they always try and go for the same teat, I suppose. There is plenty of options on mum's belly and they try and get in, onto the same one or very close to one another. I suppose wanting the best one, who knows. Um, Look at that. <laughs> Silly bunch of lions. There's a tiny bit of action. Or reaction from them to the vehicle that started up. We might just have to move our vehicle a little bit so that this vehicle can get out. Folks, buddy, I think we're going to move on as well. The sun is setting. We're going to leave these lions to themselves respect their time on their own and not bother them at night. So let's carry on. Let's head over to Jamie and see what she's up to in the tent.